pretty horrific thing to go through. Robert McDaniel planned to have some fun with his new friend, Tiffany Sutton, when the young petite woman undressed and asked to tie him up. You wouldn't expect that this kind of thing's going to happen uh, during sex, but that's exactly what happened. You know, she tied me up and just began the assault. Sutton began slicing McDaniel across his neck, back, and arms, leaving a nasty blood trail. The 43-year-old escapes, is chased with a pickaxe, and passes out. And I came to you seconds later in a fetal position on the floor, and she was in behind me drinking my blood. <laughs> yes, drinking his blood, cutting him with her own special knives. They were just skulls, different types of skulls, and they were ceremonial of some sort. There were three sizes, a small, medium, and a large. And even though I continued to try to get up and walk, and I would pass out, and every time I would wake up again, she would be drinking these wounds from my bag. Moments before police arrive, Sutton pulls out another surprise, what's believed to be a satanic book authorizing her to take possession of his belongings. And she asked me would I sign this thing, I just simply scribbled something. Uh, so I don't know, that must be the, the book you're talking about. McDaniel's memorable Valentine's Day has certainly left him scarred for life. You never think about sex the same way again, will you? No one will be tying me up for a while, no sir. The Muslims also have something to say on the subject of giant bats and vampires. They speak of the jinn. The Muslims say jinn are beings of free will whose bodies are made of quote-unquote smokeless flame, as opposed to humans whose bodies are made of clay. The word genie comes from the Arabic word jinn, which means demon. They say that the jinn were the children of the devil himself, had populated earth before humanity, and filled it with corruption during this time. In the Bible, they are called the seeds of the serpent, the Nephilim, the Raphaim, which were the children of the fallen angels. The Muslims say that there are several kinds of jinn or demons. The first kind are physical beings with wings. The second look like dogs and snakes. The third are spirits and others look human. It is said that the jinn never go out during the day and are on average stronger than humans. The bodies of the jinn are said to be made from smokeless flame. Demons are commonly shown with lights in their eyes while vampires are frequently depicted bursting into flames as if their body were made of fire. In UFO circles, these mothmen are called Dracos because it has been suggested that this creature originates from the Draco constellation. Whether that's correct or whether their origins are a little closer to home, it's unclear. But what is clear is that they've been with us for quite some time, appear to have a hidden alliance with our government, and as for vampires, they exist. And speaking of giant bats and vampires, that brings us to part-time billionaire, part-time vigilante, full-time vampire, Batman. And like a lot of other movies, Batman has more to it than it seems. In Batman, the strongest reference point is the very well-known fictional character called the Joker. In 1989's Batman with Michael Keaton, the Joker was played by Jack Nicholson, and in The Dark Knight, the Joker was played by the now-deceased Heath Ledger. Repeatedly, the writers make it clear who they had in mind while writing the Joker's script. Here's one of the cards the Joker passes out during his crime spree. A card he gives out more than once has what obviously is a devil on it. And in this scene, we see a number of cards. There's the devil card again. Then what appears to be a red horse with horns drawn in a dragon-like motif. Then two dragons intertwined. Throughout the Dark Knight, Heath Ledger persists on licking his lips and rapidly extending his tongue, like a snake. Now here's Revelation, chapter 12, verse 9. And a great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So he's the dragon, that old serpent, called the devil. And by the end, just in case there was any lingering doubt, the Joker proceeds to build a pyramidal mountain of cash and puts a criminal on top. But the other Joker, played by Jack Nicholson, also gives his identity away. I was in the bath one day when I realized why I was destined for greatness. You ever dance with the devil in the pale moonlight? You ever dance with the devil by the pale moonlight? Then, at the end of the movie, he says, Go we dance. <laughs> and then you see Vicky Vale and the Joker dancing together in the pale moonlight. Just another clue. Even the Riddler drops hints that he is in fact an old foe. I see that sparkle in your left eye. Shall we dance? For if knowledge is power, then a god am. <sighs> Hey 
Batman himself has some strange characteristics. His attributes are rumored to be similar to the classical vampire. He can apparently disappear and reappear. And Gordon, played by Gary Oldman, makes it clear that he has a history of disappearing and reappearing. How will you get him back in? He does that. You know how to disappear. We can teach you to become truly invisible. Invisible? The things they say about him. Can he really fly? I heard he can disappear. And all of Gotham is wondering what to make of Batman. Friend or foe? Meanwhile, I have given a name to my pain, mysterious figure and it is Batman. And disappear at in The Dark Knight, this is left as only a hint, but in 1989's Batman, the hint is a little heavier. In that Batman, Batman was rumored to be a vampire that drank blood. I heard the bat got him. The bat? Oh man, give me a break, will you? Five stories straight down. There wasn't no blood in the body. I know, let me guess. Giant menacing supernatural form. Kind of like a bat. They say he can't be killed. They say he drinks blood. They say... say... And although the movie The Mothman Prophecies is void of a single Mothman, Batman is not. Here's a slowed down scene from 2005's Batman Begins. In Batman Returns, Catwoman is killed by her boss, comes back to life looking extra pale, extremely strong, and goes bad. And Penguin, who runs the Red Triangle Gang, declares war on Gotham's firstborn. Now, it's time. These are the names of the firstborn sons of Gotham City. Just like I was. And like me. A terrible fate waits for them. Like the Pharaoh from the Book of Exodus, he targets the firstborn. A rather arbitrary choice. Batman Returns even has some of the more conventional symbolism. But the Joker isn't a character unique to Batman. We've encountered this Joker character before and since. The Joker's true name, or one of many, is Osmodeus. Osmodeus is portrayed as highly intelligent, extremely sadistic, and humorous. But first, here's the intro from the movie Spawn. The battle between heaven and hell has waged eternal. That army is fueled by souls harvested on Earth. The devil Malbolgia has sent a lieutenant to Earth to recruit men who will turn the world into a place of death in exchange for wealth and power. A place that will provide enough souls to complete his army and allow Armageddon to begin. In Spawn, you've got this Joker kind of guy who's working for the devil. His job was to prepare Earth so that Spawn may lead Satan's army to heaven and destroy it. In the movie, Spawn is betrayed and killed by his boss, is sent to hell and makes a deal with Satan to get a second chance for revenge and love so long as he leads Satan's army to attack heaven. Spawn agrees and returns to the land of the living with incredible abilities and a regenerative body made of a luminous material. Now the clown is kind of bitter because he believes that his likeness is closer to Satan's than Spawn's is and that he should lead Satan's army. And although he's bitter, he's under strict orders to ensure that Spawn succeeds in all he does. Eventually, the tension surfaces, Spawn and the clown fight, Spawn wins and refuses to play ball with Satan's plan, and the Earth is saved. This demonic clown has quite a bit in common with the Joker. Then there's Osmodeus, from the movie Gabriel. Gabriel is about an archangel named Gabriel, who was sent from heaven to do battle with demon villains. He arrives to find a dark, cruel world where his comrades, who are also angels, live in hiding and fear while demons rule humanity. After locating his superhero friends, he's disappointed to discover that they've discontinued their fight against evil and now live in the shadows. Almost immediately after banding behind Gabriel, Asmodeus and Samael discover the Archangel's locations and begins picking them off in an effort to remove the forces of goodness so that the souls of the city will belong to the Fallen. After a long, drawn-out crusade to kill the Fallen one by one, Gabriel eventually works his way up to Samael, who he kills and dies with. 